Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we will we will we 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 will we will we will we will be oh my gosh we will be building an SSRT. Yes! But before I do that, I want to do a quick shout out. One of my fans actually did an art, a fan art thing. It's pretty cool. It was actually from one of my older videos of the Pocket Fighter. And what he did in his drawing is uh, actually turned it into a Star Wars type space fighter. <laughs> really neat. Even got the side cutaway there showing the pilot and gunner seats. Little astrometric droid placement. Really cool. Very, very nice. Very tasteful. The channel is called The Crucial Beetle. Beetle? Is it, is it that? Mm, maybe? No. Uh, Crucial Beetle. Now, when I looked up Crucial Beetle, two channels popped up, but I'm pretty sure this is the one because it's got a lot of space stuff on it. Make sure to check them out, give them some love. And moving on. So, SSRT. For those of you who don't know, SSRT stands for Single Stage Rocket Rocket Technology. It was a terminology used by McDonnell Douglas before they became Boeing. It was also used before the terminology of SSTO was even a thing. Basically, it's a spacecraft that goes up into orbit, delivers its payload, and then comes back down, refueled, and then reused. However, it's main engine is basically just a rocket now i've i've been building ssrts since i can't remember years now probably they're fun and actually way easier to fly than sstos well technically an ssrt is an ssto but you know what i mean space plane they're, they're a lot they're a lot easier to fly than space planes that use uh, air breathing engines they get into orbit a lot quicker too which is nice sure they're a lot more bulkier they've got more kick and i mean a lot more kick they use more fuel and in some cases a lot of fuel but damn, they're sexy. And did I mention easy to fly? To fly an SSRT off the runway like a plane and land like a plane, all you have to do is point your nose to about 40, 45 degrees. And then at a certain altitude, click on the prograde icon next to your nav ball and then let it naturally gravity turn into orbit. Just like flying a regular regular rocket at a certain point, of course. And then from then on, it's pretty much just like a regular air breathing SSTO. Deliver cargo, come back down, land on runway. Check, 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 double check. check. SSRTs are actually something you can build while in career career mode early on why because well it's it's basically a rocket with wings well it's sometimes not wings but you know you can do things without wings i believe i've made a video on this different tier levels of ssdos which i've been getting a lot of requests to make a part two of since i only think we went up to tier six or something like that where we figured out that tier one ssdos were how should you say impossible someone even went behind the video and did math about it math definitely check his channel out pretty cool so yeah as i was scouring during the internet, I found the Star Raker concept. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But then I thought to myself, well, the Star Raker was supposed to bring in a lot of material into orbit. I was able to make the Star Raker, but I had to kind of turn it into an SSRT because the uh, even the rapier en engines weren't strong enough to get this thing off the ground. So just I just went to rockets instead. But anyway, the Star Raker that I made couldn't really get a whole lot into space. Maybe 25, 30 tons at max. That's mostly because of the fact that it was more of a show and tell. I just wanted to make something that looked like the craft or looked like the concept. I wasn't actually trying to build anything that was legit made for the game mechanics, but it made me think, what is the biggest, most heaviest part in the game? And could I build something to take the most heaviest, largest, biggest part in the game and put it in orbit using this craft? So the heaviest part in the game is actually a fuel tank that's 288 tons. It's the biggest fuel tank that the game has. My problem was is that I wanted to get this fuel tank into orbit. So the solution, of course, was to build something to get it into orbit. So now I had a mission. I had a quest. I had a goal. Now, of course, to get 200 and damn near 290 tons into orbit, using a regular air-breathing SSTO is quite difficult. It's doable, but fucking difficult. And since I'm a, a full-time working employee in order to pay the bills, I don't have that kind of time. It took a week just to make this. Well, yeah. Yeah, pretty much a week. But then again, I could only put about an hour or two into it every day after work. When you're working close to 10 hours a day, it can be a little tricky. I was lucky enough to have this weekend off, which was kind of nice. The only bad thing about SSRT space planes is trying to get the engines and the weight situated. Because an SSTO air breathing engine, you can put it on the sides in order to help balance the whole craft. But for rockets, of course, putting rockets on the sides, sure you can do it because KSP mechanics is a little funky. But realistically speaking, covering 
bring most of your wingy bits and hot rocket exhaust gas isn't ideal not by a long shot so the design so the design sort of you know of the rockets need to need to be mostly in the back this however creates a weight problem as most of the dead weight which is the rocket weight itself the weights of the rockets tend to pull the center of mass back as the fuel begins to drain and it pulls it way back a little too far back in order to in order to offset this we need to figure out where to put the wings now yes i could have designed possibly something with the engines tucked inside the wings maybe and then have it come out the back but with the plumes and everything clipping through the wings that would have looked weird it just wouldn't have worked after trial and error multiple multiple times i found a solution by simply putting some wingy bits in the back that were on hinges that tilted upwards as well as allowing the front end of the cargo bay to collapse inwards it actually shoved the center of lift far enough back to be in line with the center of mass during re-entry this helped out a lot which allowed me to have control not a whole lot of controls things not a jet fighter although it does look like one but if you're easy with the controls it flies well enough to maneuver and land but of course with designing and testing anything you will have your explosions lots and lots of explosions time wasted life being sucked out of you as you feel your youth being drained into the dark pits of kerbal hell it's fine, whatever. Now, first time I tried to get the payload inside the cargo bay, I had a radial attachment on the bottom, which detached. This did not end well, multiple times. I wish I could have recorded the beautiful explosion once in orbit, but just imagine it just went poof into lots of pieces. That's pretty much what happened. So instead of radial, radially, I just attached it with a decoupler and voila, works perfectly now. The only slight downside is that because of the size of this craft, it's not a simple beast for instance the cargo bay is of course customized so what happens is that if you want to close the cargo bay and lock it you've got to manually go out there and manually lock it with tie downs no <laughs> duct tape steel duct tape also known as struts i know what you're thinking the veils just lock them in place and then put ridge attachments ridge ridge whatever in settings you know what i mean well guess what i tried that it does not work the forces that this this thing encounters on re-entry will still grab the those wingy bits that I used for cargo bay doors and try to rip them off the hinges which of course does not bow well with the flight path of this thing as it yanks it up and down left and right back and forth side to side so in addition to locking the hinges I also tie everything down but it only takes a little while and it's worth it when you actually land in one piece now you'll see a bunch of wingy bits that aren't straight some have an extreme curve to them and yeah this does create a whole lot of drag but here's the thing and this is another beautiful thing about SS SRTs, by the way, besides the speed of delivery and the ease of flight path, is that while drag is important, it's actually way, way less important than a typical air breathing SSTO that needs to travel through the atmosphere for however long to catch up and get some speed. And why is that? Well, I'll tell you. It's because of the simple fact that an SSRT cuts through most of the thick atmosphere immediately during takeoff. Most of its travel time is actually in the upper thinner atmosphere or vacuum where drag is pretty much insignificant. So while yes, as you're building your SSRT, do think about drag, but at the same time, it's not all that important. Trust me on this, I know what I'm talking about. Cue the beautiful cinematic footage.
I like how it looks like the F-22 Raptor. That's, that's always pretty cool. But anyway, this has been a Kerbal Space Program video. SSTO or SSRT, however you want to say it. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. Sorry my videos are coming out weekly now. That's mostly my fault for uh, taking on these huge projects when I know I don't have a whole lot of time. Need something simpler, something smaller, like a little baby. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really, 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 really like this video, consider subscribing. I upload often, mostly Kerbal Space Program. Maybe I'll try some other space games here in a little bit. We'll see. I also have a membership if you're interested. If you join up, there's a whole bunch of cool little badges and emojis and stuff. Definitely give that a checky, check out, check in, check. But anyway, yeah, make sure you hit that like button so that YouTube actually gives a fuck. Love you all. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you.